All right, folks, for, for those of you who were born maybe before 1990, uh, you probably heard of a man called Richard Simmons, and I think that we're getting ready to work out with Richard Simmons together in this video, because that's what molecules do when they go into the infrared spectrometer. All right, so let me clear this out and kind of explain what I mean when I say we're getting ready to do the Richard Simmons workout. So, infrared technology, we now know, uses 1,000 to 100,000 nanometers in wavelength to produce a very low energy wave that will hit a molecule in an instrument. The same kind of thing happens in UV vis. You're placing a compound in a light path, and that path basically is exposed to the energy that's shot at it, and it absorbs light. The same thing happens with infrared. You're going to put a compound in the presence of a light path, and that compound will absorb this nanometer, and it will start to do things and the machine will be able to pick up those differences and tell me a little bit about that molecule. All right, well, there's two things that basically the molecules will do, and I'm going to put number one and number two. The first thing that the molecule might do is stretch. Just like you getting out of the bed in the morning, you stretch your old, tired bones. You feel a little bit better about yourself if you do. Or maybe you're not that old, and maybe you're in yoga class. The same kind of thing. You are stretching your body. And molecules will stretch as well. And we'll talk more about that in just a second. The other type of movement that the molecules will do is bend. If you've watched Legally Blonde, you've heard of them do the bend and snap. Well, in infrared, molecules are bend and stretch. So molecules will bend back and forth, and they will stretch back and forth. Now, what does that mean? Okay, well, I can do a very simple kind of explanation maybe over here to the side. Let's say that we have a molecule of hydrochloric acid, and this hydrochloric acid is connected by a single bond, and that single bond is basically a sigma bond, but we have to keep in mind that there's two electrons involved in that bond, right? This is not really a stick. If you are taking a chemistry class or a science course, and they call these stick bonds, there's no such thing as a stick bond. There is no connector that connects the hydrogen and the chlorine together. That's imaginary. That's made up. What happens is that this bond, the line that we call a bond, is represented by two electrons. And those electrons are charges, and they're particles, partly. And they're there, and they connect the hydrogen and the chlorine together. So it is not rigid. It is not a permanent stick that connects the two things together. This is a very flexible area of the molecule. And what I mean when I say flexible is that this bond, if it wanted could stretch. So how can I rewrite that maybe to make it make sense? Well, imagine that this hydrogen and this chlorine is connected, but instead of a line that you normally draw in a science course, you have to think of this line as a slinky, some kind of coil. That really is a better concept of what happens as far as movement goes. So this slinky will be able to move back and forth. So this molecule could kind of be at normal rest and be where it needs to be, and that's the shape that we see. Or this molecule could be 
a little bit closer together. Or that molecule could be a little bit stretched. And we see the two atoms further apart. This is what we call stretching. And all bonds, every single one of them, have some type of stretching. They will do it. It could be a double bond. It will do it as well. A triple bond. That will happen as well. If there's more than one line there, who cares? Those lines are not really lines. That's what I have to keep pushing. These are very fluid molecules. They move quite easily. And in the field of infrared spectroscopy, we play off of the stretching that happens in a molecule. So that's the number one movement. Stretch. Back and forth. In this case, the hydrogen and the chlorine can squeeze together or they can be pulled apart. And you get this constant fluid motion back and forth in the molecule itself. All right, now let's talk about bend. This molecule really can't bend, okay? And the reason is because there's just two things, a hydrogen and a chlorine, and that's it. So we can't really reference a bend at all. All right, but maybe another molecule that I could draw down here would be water. And water's Lewis dot structure looks like this. Three atoms connected by two bonds. Well, I got to keep in mind that this bond between the first hydrogen and the oxygen, that actually has some movement. There's a slinky there. So that will have some stretch associated with it. This bond the hydrogen and the oxygen on the right-hand side. Well, guess what? That's a slinky bond. That will have some movement as well. That can stretch. And then what makes this molecule different is that this molecule can also show bending. And what I mean by that is take a look at the two extremities. There is an angle that's associated right here. And this molecule can bend back and forth. So that means that the water molecule at some points can be really close together. And these two hydrogens are pretty close and they don't like each other. You know, they're bad neighbors. They want to be a little further apart. Other times, well, they can be at normal rest. And this is the location that they like to be in most of the time. And then other times, they can stretch out a little bit more and be a little further apart. And in each case, we're looking at the angle, kind of, that's in between these two hydrogens. That is a bending motion. And all molecules, every single one of them, will stretch and will bend. And... They do the stretching and they do the bending in this region. If we provide them with a very low energy wave, and that wave is in the infrared region, those molecules will stretch and bend a certain way. And we are able to pick up on the stretching and the bending that happens with these molecules. So let's talk a little bit about the workout routine that these molecules might show us. So this very first one that I'm going to show is called a symmetrical stretch. All right. So if you look at this molecule, what you're seeing is a center atom with two atoms connected. And these slinky bonds are getting pulled away and pushed inward in the same momentum in the same direction. So they both get pushed out, they both get pulled back in. All right? Imagine these are dumbbells that you're lifting above your head. That's the symmetrical stretch. All right? If you're lifting both hands up at one time, 
and you're lowering both hands at one time, that is a symmetrical stretch that the molecules can do. Well, if we have a symmetrical stretch, we can also have a unsymmetrical stretch, or what we call asymmetrical stretch. So if you're lifting the dumbbells above your head, well, what happens is that one hand goes up, then that hand comes back down while the other one goes up. So your right hand goes in the air, it comes down, your left hand goes in the air, it comes down, and you alternate them back and forth. That is what we call an asymmetrical stretch. So one is getting pushed up while the other one's getting pulled in. And then they will reverse and the other direction will flow. That is the asymmetrical stretch that we see with these compounds. All right, what about the bending? All right, the first motion of bending is something that we call scissoring. And if you've watched South Park, you might be familiar with scissoring. But they're talking about a different type of scissor than we are. All right, so scissoring basically means that two atoms are hanging off of the center one. And if I'm doing the workout routine, what I'm doing is that I'm starting with my hands out to the side. And I am lifting them up over my head. And that is what we call scissor. Just like a scissor cuts a piece of paper, it gets closer together. The same thing happens with these molecules. So I've got my hand weights. My hand weights are held out to each side. And then what I do is I raise both of them up, point them to the sky, and then I let them back down to the side. That is the scissor motion. The next one is called rocking. Notice that in rocking, it looks like a rocking chair. It goes back and forth, right? So what happens here is that maybe I'm working on my side, okay? I want rid of those maybe flabby fat tires that happens around your waistline. So what I do is that I start off with my weights to the side, and one hand goes down while the other one goes up. And then I bend over in the other direction, that arm goes down, the other one comes up over my head. And I keep rocking back and forth like this, over and over. That is called a rock. It's not a scissor. Scissors have that motion of cutting paper. Rocking basically is like a rocking chair. It rocks back and forth, left to right. The next one is called wagging. So you've got to think of these things in three-dimensional form. And wagging is very similar to this ace or this symmetrical stretch. The problem is that we're looking in a different axis, a different orientation. So imagine that you're holding the hand weights above your head. What wagging means is basically you're taking your hand weights and you're going forward a little bit. And then you're taking the hand weights and you're going back above your head. And then those hand weights are going to be leaned backward to the wall behind you. That wagging is basically coming forward and then going back. Going forward, then going back. Again, we're talking about three-dimension orientation. So wagging is forward and back. The other method is straight up and straight down. And finally, the last one is called a twist. So what happens in this orientation is that I'm holding the hand weights above my head. One hand goes forward to the wall in front of me, and one hand goes backward to the wall behind me. And then I alternate the position. My right hand goes forward, my left hand goes back, and then I'll alternate it again, and that is what we call a twist, all right? So those are the six motions that we talk about when it concerns infrared spectroscopy. A twist, a wag going forward and back, a rocking, which means in the same direction at the same time, just back and forth, left to right, a scissor, meaning they're getting closer and then they're getting wider. 
a asymmetrical stretch. One goes up, the other one comes down. And a symmetrical stretch. Both go up and both go down. So those are the movements that we need to feel really good about when it comes to the Richard Simmons workout. All molecules will show some type of bending and some type of stretching when it concerns their bonds. And we're going to have to pick up what molecules and functional groups do what so we can easily kind of look at their spectrum and identify what is present.